Welcome back to another video of Sounds Right Media. My name's Anthony. And I'm Brian. And we are here to bring you another important video on cryptocurrency for our crypto weekend. It's not Ethereum, it's not Bitcoin, it's XRP. Before we get into the video, we'd appreciate it if you could like the video, subscribe, comment down below, and uh, share it. If you get a chance, share this video with anyone who might benefit from, from some uh, cryptocurrency advice. It is going crazy right now it in the crypto is. market. And uh, we got Brian to help kind of wade us through these uncertain waters. Absolutely. Brian is a 37 year professional <laughs> stock trader with a lot of knowledge. And uh, we're gonna pick his brain and find out about XRP. So stay tuned, cause that's what we're bringing you. So XRP can be a little bit hard to understand. It's not your typical cryptocurrency, which makes it even more alluring. Sure. Brian, what is XRP? Well, and XRP, is, is a native currency of the Ripple network. So the Ripple network is an open source protocol platform enabling the swift and low cost transfer of funds. Unlike Bitcoin, these transactions are done in a matter of seconds. Now, Ripple is the platform and XRP is a native currency of the Ripple network. Okay, so what you're saying is that Ripple is kind of like the whole system and XRP is the currency that they provide to work within their system. Correct, exactly. Okay. Anth, why don't you tell our listeners a few interesting facts about XRP? Absolutely. Uh, some interesting facts. The maximum number of tokens for XRP is set at 100 billion. Around 40% of the XRP tokens are in circulation. Ripple owns the majority or around 60 billion of the created 100 billion tokens. Transactions made in XRP can be settled in only a couple of seconds. It is much faster compared to Bitcoin or Ethereum. They can only issue up to 1 billion coins per month. And if those aren't all taken up and purchased, then it goes back into what's called their escrow yes, account. Yes, yes, yes. Back into the queue. And as we know with Bitcoin, one of the things is that there's only so many Bitcoins, I think it's like 21 million. That's kind of why we see prices going up because the, the amount of Bitcoin that gets mined gets us closer to that 21 million number. Speaking of Bitcoin and its mining process, XRP is completely different because XRP is an iterative process where they just simply issue up to a maximum of 1 billion coins per month. One of the facts that holds the biggest potential for me with XRP is the fact that it was created to be used mostly in banks yes. and as a money transfer system and not as a payment currency, unlike Bitcoin, which can be used in stores. So we've seen a giant price movement, both up and down sometimes yep. in Ripple. What factors affect the price? I think some of the factors going forward you have to be looking at are some of the regulatory frameworks in different countries, you know, are they gonna start loosening things up in this cryptocurrency arena? And also the other big thing that I'm gonna be watching very closely as we move forward is, are there gonna be more institutions that start implementing the Ripple network? If okay. there are, I think that's gonna play a huge value in the price of XRP. And I honestly think that that's where things are going. I think, you know, yes. a year, two years down the road, we are gonna see this XRP at significantly higher prices. So when speaking about factors affecting price, you obviously have to mention one of the ones that's most well known, which is the lawsuit yes. going on. We'd be remiss to not mention it. So Brian, can you explain a little well, bit on that lawsuit? The SEC has filed a $1.3 billion lawsuit against Ripple Lab saying that it sold XRP tokens as an unregistered security from 2013 to 2018. but. I don't think I'm, you know, while I'm concerned, I don't think I'm as concerned as I would have been otherwise because of recent, Ripple is asked to have the case thrown out of court simply because a judge has now ruled uh, in favor, it sounds like, overseeing this okay. case here. And um, the, the judge came out and said that the SEC has no right to demand personal financial data belonging to Ripple's current CEO and former CEO. So I, I think basically what everyone is, the, the talk is kind of now that there is no difference between XRP and Bitcoin, simply put. Right. Now, we would be idiots <laughs> to not have you look at a chart for us. So we're going to bring up the XRP chart, which is looking interesting at the moment. And we're going to get Brian's input on the chart. Here we go. And boom, there's your chart for XRP. 
Brian, this, what do we got? This guy loves that introduction. Well, Ant, this is an interesting chart to look at. Back here on the left-hand side of the chart, we can see XRP was trading up above $3. And this is back in 2017. And like most things, it has the big run and then it comes back on down and just kind of plays sub 50 cents all the way up until in here recently, where we now start getting a nice kick to the upside. And that's primarily because it's being accepted by more and more financial institutions. If we take a look at this move here up to the $1.96 area here over the prior couple of days, I'm not a willing buyer up here, Ant. I'm not gonna chase price. As we've talked before, I wanna let the trade come back to me. We did see the stock last evening trade on down. Friday evening, it traded down to uh, the buck 50-ish area, and I'd ideally like to see this pull back a little further. We had a breakout here you know, a week ago or so around this $1.10 area. Ideally, I'd like to see a pullback to $1.10. That coincides with the 20-day moving average. That's where I'd probably look to be an initial purchaser of it. I'd leg into a piece there. With, with these type of cryptos, you, you don't really know where they're gonna go and if, how much of a pullback you might get. They could just go straight on up, but ideally 110 is where I'd like to start being a buyer of it. If I could, which I don't know I'll get the opportunity, i love to be a buyer, sub a dollar, somewhere around 80 to 90 cents. Right now the 50 day moving average comes in at 73 cents. You've got the 100 day moving average much, much further below at 56 cents. And again, remember, moving average lines are always time and price sensitive. So come tomorrow, these moving average lines are gonna be at different prices. The other thing that I would note is that um, a 50% retracement from the 110 breakout that we're looking at right here to the high of 196, that's gonna come in right around $1.53. We did dip, dip slightly below that Friday evening. But ideally, I'd like to see this pull all the way back to $1.10 before I start getting into this here. Again, who knows where this is going to go. This may be $2.53 come next week, but I'm not going to buy something that's had this big of a run over the prior handful of days and weeks. Having said that, if it does give me a high level consolidation, meaning if we just kind of play around in this whole $1.40, $1.50-ish area to $2.00, and then I get a pending breakout above recent highs of that 196, I would then be willing to be a buyer of it from a swing trade perspective. Only a swing trade perspective. From an investment perspective, I want it back at my price down around $1.10 to 80 cents. But from a swing trade perspective, I will buy a high level consolidation with a breakup because then I know I can run my stop below the recent lows, which were somewhere around this $1.45 to $1.50 area. So XRP, yeah. baby, I think you're bullish on it. I really kind of feel Brian. Brian doesn't get bullish on too many things, but I've been, I've been, I'm going to tell you guys off camera. He's been talking about XRP like, like it's going on a style. XRP is going to be the next, uh, the next Tesla. And well, Brian's well, Brian. but let's caution. It's only when it's at my price. Right. Yeah. It's got to yeah. come back to my price. Like I said, if I have a high level consolidation up in that 196 to buck 44 area, saying, and, and it chops sideways for a week. And then I get a breakout above two, I'm in it with the stop then around that 145 area. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm being a little facetious there. Of course Bri you are. Brian, he really is bullish on it though. I mean, I, I, I'm bullish on Long it. Long term I am. Yeah. Absolutely. I bought XRP when it was 25 cents and got out at like 35 cents. Uh, and now we see what's <laughs> going on with it. So, but hey, I'm not, I'm not mad. I took a little profit on that. So we have confirmation that our pro stock trader here, Brian, is a bull on XRP, but long term, what is the price prediction? The most important part of this? Well, Anth, right now you've got an Australian, an Australian financial tech firm that's using these guys big time. I could see this here being four to six, maybe by the end of the year, maybe by the end of the year. Next year would not surprise me to see 10 and honestly, three to five years out, it would not surprise me to see this over a hundred. Let's go, let's go, hundo. But again, when I'm gonna be a buyer of it initially, it's gotta come back to my yeah. price right around a dollar ten. I'd love to see it below a dollar. Don't know if we're gonna get it, but we'll have to see what the rest of the whole cryptocurrency uh, landscape does here in the coming days, weeks, and months. Now, if you wanna know how, how important that price prediction is, go and watch any of our other videos and you'll find out real quick that uh, price predictions are normally under <laughs> their current price right now. So it's a big deal to be bullish for Brian and I'm excited for it. I'm gonna be watching XRP closely 
And when it comes down a little bit, if I do get that or if I get that consolidation process, I will be a buyer. Uh, let's mention real quick that right now, because of the pending lawsuit, you cannot buy XRP on platforms like Coinbase or Robinhood, but there are sites out there that do allow your apps out there, whatever you want to call them, that do allow you to yeah. purchase XRP. GDX, Polynex, and Bitfinex. And you can buy BitTrue them and Uphold, but watch out for hidden fees that will charge yes. a percentage of your deposits and withdrawals. Some of these sites, and I won't name which one because I don't want any issues with that. But they will chop you up. They will chop you up. I will say I put in $500 and I left with 300 and I, and I barely made any money and it was because of the site taking the money. So be careful with the fees. So that's your video on XRP today. Be sure to click that like button. Be sure to click that subscribe button. Share the video, comment down below. My name's Anthony. And I'm Brian. We'll see you next time.